Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you guys are having a wonderful beginning of your week. For some of you, depending on where you are in the world, this is like the first day of school. Kids are back in school, depending on if you're actually putting them back in the schools or if you're homeschooling them. But in all of it, guys, and then there's some of you, you've been back in school. So in all of it, guys, pray over your children, pray for protection, pray for guidance, pray for his covering. You know, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And you know, sometimes the enemy, if he can't get to you, he's going to try to get to your children. So it's very important that you keep them uh, prayed up. You pray over them and you don't want to instill in your children a spirit, the spirit of fear. And so that's one thing, guys, because there are things that we're afraid of or we're concerned about. We pray about it. We take authority over it. Of course, we still take natural precautions as needed, but you don't want to instill in your young children about being scared and being afraid and all these different things because they're very young. And once they're getting that type of feedback at this age, you can be rest assured that you're going to have somebody that's just scared of everything because that's been programmed and indoctrinated in them. So regardless of everything that's going on, guys, even though we must always let our children know about the dangers and the things that's going on in the world, you must also demonstrate and make sure that you are declaring and let them understand about the power of the Lord. You know, sometimes you find a lot of people, they so scared, they don't trust the Lord. So then they go ahead and now they start to make little uh, uh, scary clones of themselves. So their children are just as scary, just as paranoid, just as everything as they are. But we have to be able to stand on the promises of God. We have to be able to realize that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We have to truly believe what the word of God says, that I can pick up anything poisonous, nothing deadly shall harm me. And it does not mean that God is telling us to go drink some, some arsenic or rat poison. It means some things that there, I truly believe that there are things that we may have ingested been around some things that could have been in the atmosphere you know viral or just you've been in danger and some could even be in have been in your food that would have harmed you and it did not simply by the power of God I truly believe that God is constantly saving our lives there's a lot of things that we're not aware of whether it's in the food whether it's in things around you you can even be saying well I don't trust the, the food in the grocery store I'm gonna grow my own food it does not matter, guys. There's still a matter of the ground, the soil, the elements. If the enemy is going to get you, he's going to get you. You understand? I mean, if, if there's something wrong, it can happen to you, whether you grow your own food or you're buying it at the store. So, guys, even if you are growing your own food and you're taking your own precautions, doing things like that, you have to realize it's not in you growing your own food by which you are being uh, kept from poisons and insecticides and other things guys that they can put in regular foods but the fact that it's by the power of God that keeps you because believe it or not the, the it, sickness disease things of that nature it's all supernatural it just manifests itself in it through a natural medium but it's all supernatural so just keep that in mind that it's because of God that we that we are safe that he keeps us from harm and danger guys and so we've got to have faith in god and everything and not be scared all the time and so we don't want to instill that in our children guys we want them to be aware of the reality of what goes on they have to know the natural precautions for certain things but they also need to be taught more than ever the power and the authority that they have in the lord so now, guys, if I've gone on on that for a good two minutes or so, I want to talk with you all about, uh, uh, let's see, which one should I talk? Because the Lord gave me two messages. Holy Spirit, give me one second. So, guys, I want to talk with you all about some things that sometimes, you know, when we are going through things in our life, it's very easy to feel like, you know, God can't really relate to what I'm going through. Jesus didn't go through what I'm going through. So how can he re relate? How can he relate to my situation if he has not gone through it? And I'm going to say here something that was in my spirit is that God literally walk through and experience a lot of things that most believers will go through and most people go through 
in different arenas of their life. Okay, so whether you're saved or you're meaning you're Christian or you're not a Christian, there are certain things that God has walked through and gone through that you may be experiencing. And you could be, if you're not saved or you may be saved, whichever way, you're angry with God about certain things. But I want you to realize that just as God is this, so does Satan. Just as the power of, of, of this, that there's God and his angels, there's Satan and his demons. And so one thing that God has always given us is the choice. So certain things happen and we may experience certain things. You make certain things, experience certain things. It's different for all of us. But sometimes there are things that will happen and you'll say, God, why did you let this happen? But certain things may happen in our lives as we're older based on our own choices and not listening to taking heed to the warnings and the red flags. Certain things may have happened when you were a child or a young person under the supervision of another person where certain things happen and you're going, God, why did this happen to me? And it can be very painful. And so you may feel and think either you either have anger against God for certain things that uh, people, choices that they made that affected you. And then the other thing, it may be like, you know what? God cannot relate to anything that I'm going through. You know, he's God. And, you know, I, I re read about Jesus and there's no way he cannot relate to what I go through. But the Lord, there's a reason why the Lord Jesus came on this earth and he walked on this earth and he went, he came as a human. He didn't come glorified as the son of God. He did not come in all his glory and splendor. He didn't descend down into earth from the sky because then that would have just been easy, right? For people to believe and people to follow because they're awestruck, starstruck. And so God wanted people to truly, what he's looking for and what he's filtering out in these days are people that truly, they're serving him in spirit and in truth, not from the soul, the soul which is depending on moods and feelings and is changeable, but the spirit that's connected with God, led by God, following the word of God and the prompts of God and in truth. And truth, guys, is something that when, you know, you may first start with the Lord and you may be kind of shaky, bumpy along the way. Um, but the more you're spending time in the presence of the Lord and in the word of God, you're going to find more and more that your heart and your mindset will be different. And you're going to find yourself moving away from your old ways of thinking and walking in the truth that comes from what? The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, is going to guide us and lead us into all truth. So the more we choose to hear from and listen to the Holy Spirit and follow him and learn from him, learn from our mistakes, then we're going to be walking in spirit and in truth. So during this time, guys, as we're going through our walk, it can be to a point where you feel like, you know, the Lord and I cannot relate. Jesus don't understand what I go through, but he did. And I believe that he does because he came and he came, he came in the form of flesh. He didn't come glorious and magnificent. He grew up, was with the, the carpenter, you know, uh, Mary and Joseph. I think carpenters may have done okay back then. I don't think that necessarily meant that they were poor, but it wasn't like a lawyer or a doctor or a Pharisee or scribe and Pharisees and scribes were rich. They are wealthy. And the Lord went through a lot of stuff, guys. Let's think about just a few things. He was rejected. He was challenged a lot. People rejected his teachings a lot. And whatever the scenario may have been, you may not be teaching, but every human being at some point have, re have experienced rejection. Whether it's in the area of love, through your family, uh, you know, love, love, romantic type of love, someone you were interested in, they rejected you, or, you know, friends, or parental, right? So people have experienced rejection. Jesus was rejected. If you read the word of God, truly read it, you'll see that he was rejected. People would reject him. They rejected his teaching. They rejected him on a whole. 
They felt that he was not good enough to be telling them about anything. They're like, who are you? You're just, aren't you the carpenter's son? Who are you to be teaching us? And who do you think you are to be talking to us about anything and giving us teachings? We are well-versed in the laws. We know more than you. We're older than you. How can you be telling us anything, right? He was also physically assaulted. There are plenty of, uh, there are a few instances in the Bible, and you have to keep in mind, it probably happened more than what's recorded. Because you have to realize what's recorded is a snapshot. It does not tell us everything. But he was physically assaulted. The Pharisees and scribes were offended by his teachings, and they pushed him. They physically pushed him out of the synagogues. They physically pushed him throughout the streets. And then they attempted through the city, through the, you know, the streets, yeah. And then they pushed him all the way. They took him to a cliff and tried to push him off of there. And he escaped. There's a time that his life was literally in danger. So he, he was in hiding for a while. Because up to his crucifixion, things start to get really bad. And so they were seeking his life and he had to hide for his life. There are times Jesus has been spit on in the face. As a matter of fact, while he was talking, he was slapped in the face mid-sentence. He was speaking about something. One of the uh, rulers asked him a question and he answered and uh, he was slapped in the face for how, who do you think you're talking to? That type of thing. And the Lord looked at him and said, why do you strike me? If I've said something wrong, tell me where I've said something wrong. But why do you strike me? Jesus has been abused. He was also beat up by a band of soldiers. If you're thinking of a band of Roman soldiers, you Google that. We're not talking about 10 soldiers here. We're talking about more than that. Can you imagine him being mocked, ridiculed, and beat up by a band of soldiers? Jesus went through that. He was rejected by his family at times. His brothers did not believe in him. Very close to his crucifixion, you'll find in the scripture where his brothers are telling him, you know, why don't you go ahead and go to the, I want to say, might have, it's not, it wasn't a Passover. It was some sort of feast that they were doing. And um, they told him just go. But then the word of God tells us how they did not really believe in him. He's been rejected by family. You know, family, when you get rejected by family, does not always mean all your family, even though that happens to some. It could be some people in your family. Nevertheless, it still has a sting, right? He was abandoned by his disciples at some point. They all left him all by himself. Once he was arrested, they all scattered. And then before that, before he, it was just the 12 right there were he had lots of lots and lots of people were coming to him they were getting baptized and they were getting saved and everything and they were turning to the lord but then they did not have the spiritual understanding so when he started to teach them about eating his flesh and drinking his blood they're thinking cannibalism because they did not understand but you know i realized this this happened the people that fell away from him it was right before he transfigured so before his transfiguration and and all of that there was only 12 of them left but before that there was a lot but because they couldn't understand that this was where a lot of them fell away from him and they thought no this is too hard what you're saying you're wanting us to eat of your flesh and drink of your blood no this is too much and they left him the Lord has been abandoned. The Lord has been rejected. The Lord has been physically abused. The Lord has been called crazy. They called him a devil. They called him a demon. They said that he ha he has lost it. He's crazy. Basically, that you know he's teaching her you know he has her heresy. He's teaching heresy. This is what happened to him. Jesus has been in situations where because of his downfall, people became friends. Um, because of 
what they deemed to be his downfall, people became friends. At the time that at his, in his worst hours, worst times of his life, most vulnerable time brought people together. What does this mean? Uh, Pilate and Herod. They were not friends. I'm not sure if they were enemies, but they definitely were not friends. So at some point, Pilate had to send Jesus to Herod. And Herod was interested, always wanted to meet Jesus. Long story short, he sends him back to Herod after he Pilate. questions him and gets no answer. And from that point on, because of that whole trial situation around Jesus, they became friends. How many of you can definitely talk about or know of when your downfall and when you were going through things, suddenly people became friends or got close because they had something in common, which was your downfall. They're happy, so now they have something to talk about. The Lord has been there. The Lord has been crucified. He was beaten. He was spit on. His beard was ripped out. There's accounts of that in the Bible. He was stripped down, guys. He was humiliated. The Lord was born in very unconventional, under very unconventional circumstances. Mary and Joseph, Mary was a virgin. Joseph had not touched her, but they were engaged to be married. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. There was no sexual encounter. The Lord just placed a child within her womb. Now people will be looking at Mary like, oh, you're pregnant and you were not, you have not been with Joseph yet. Oh, you have been with another man. So she was in danger right off the top. Jesus was not named after Joseph, which would have been the tradition. And But no, he was named Jesus, which was like, why would you be naming him Jesus? It's the same thing with John. His father's name was Zebedee. And so the people were thinking, no, his name shall be whatever name they're going to give him. And Zebedee was like, no, his name will be John. So they were not given names according to what was traditional. And Jesus was not born in the perfect setting. So he can relate to many people, maybe not that the, the dad left the home or anything like that, but situations was, were questionable, I'm sure. And the reason why I say that is because the Bible tells us that Joseph, not wanting her to be um, humiliated or really subject to death, because that's what would have happened to her, he was going to put her away. He was not going to marry her once he found out she was pregnant. But the angel of the Lord came and spoke to him and he married her. But circumstances, that would have been considered, this is really bad. And people can do math even back then. So I'm sure the baby's not named after Joseph. And then on top of it, she's pregnant and the time. And people can track backtrack and be like, no, this is not recorded. But math has been around for a good hot minute. So he, those are the circumstances. We have Jesus giving and helping people, but yet there was no one standing with him or, or speaking up for him when he was on trial. Jesus had someone that stabbed him in the back. That would have been Judas. Judas. Judas is there with them, seeing all the miracles, breaking bread with Jesus, and yet he betrayed him. Paul, Peter also betrayed Jesus. Because he was out of fear, he denied him three times. Now he did come back around, a lot of the disciples came back around and they were brought together after the resurrection of Jesus, they saw him again and he spoke to them. And there's people that just didn't believe him. They, they didn't believe he's dead and that's it. They were fearful in hiding, don't know what to do now. 
So there are people that may not believe in you despite what you're saying. There are people who still challenge you, don't believe in you. Jesus went through many things that we experience and still do. He was crucified and killed on the cross. And he was being, he was being uh, ridiculed and mocked the entire time. There are people that's been martyred for Jesus. And even though their spirit, even though their soul is in the body or whatever it is, whether they're headless, whether they were tortured, beaten, whatever it is, their body's in the grave. But you better believe that their spirit is in a place of rest right now. So whatever those circumstances may be, you know, there's nothing in the Bible about any sort of sexual encounters because he had no sin. He didn't do those things. He had no sin in him. But I believe just as he, he resisted, he, re, he resisted, the, resisted the devil, he would have been able to resist anything that came from a woman because he was without sin. The Bible tells us that he was without sin. Jesus was tempted of the devil just like we were and we do get. If you are so and so, let this, let this, let this bread, let the stone turn to bread. If you are such and such, let this happen and let that happen. There's people that will be like, if you are a Christian and if your God is real, then prove this, prove that. And the Lord showed us through his answers how you deal with individuals like that. The word of God, not with arguing and standing your ground. There are many ways, many circumstances, many things that the Lord went through that we can relate to it. He related to us in rejection, in being abandoned, in being physically abused, in being verbally abused, in being ridiculed, in being rejected, left by yourself, family rejecting you, being beaten up physically, and then being killed. But he did all that to show us that even in this flesh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome and we can do all things through him. The Holy Spirit quickened him and allowed him to continue to do the things that he needed to do. Even when the Pharisees and scribes was following him and troubleshooting him and making a mockery of different things. When people set him up, you know, Jesus know what it's like that to have been to to have to have not done anything wrong or to and have been so good that the people will choose the the the, the Pharisee and scribe were able to convince the people to choose Barabbas, the thief and a murderer over him. Some of you have gone through that. Well, you see, they'll choose a Barabbas, the Barabbas in your life, the person who's doing you wrong. You could be that child. There's a Barabbas in your family. You, the child that will come around and try to do things and make things right, but the whole family is going to choose Barabbas over you. You may have a Barabbas on your job, never on time, not doing what they need to do, but they're so cool with the boss and they get away with everything. And you, the one that's doing right, coming on time, doing things right, staying late, getting things done, you're being overlooked for promotion. You don't get picked. Whatever that circumstance is, I want you to know that when you're saying that, oh God, you know, Jesus can't relate to me. No, he he did way more and he went above and beyond. No, we can't relate to him in the sense of what he has done for us because we would have never died for nobody. But he died for us and he rose up and he did all those things so we can see that it is possible. It is possible to serve the Lord. It is possible to overcome lust temptation you see the lord overcame the temptation that the enemy was trying to bring to him to eat and to bow down and to, to fall into the sins of the world the glories of the world the glories of this world also in also includes us um lustful relationships the pride of life the lust of the flesh the pride of life and just whatever you want but he overcame and he showed that even in situations where he, he probably could he did not want to die he was asking the lord three different times if it's possible let this cup pass from me but you know what he said nevertheless let your wit not my will but yours and in that these are lessons that we can learn that even if it came down to death guys that to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord when 
when you're rejected by people, when people leave you, when people don't believe in you, when people will choose the worst person over you. God wants us to see that in every circumstance and then some. He has walked it, he's lived it, and he died on the cross, and he, he shed his blood, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can now overcome. And he says, greater things than these shall you do. So don't negate yourself. We are flesh, we are human, but don't fall on that. We're also spirit, and that's the part of ourself that we need to focus on and feed it through the word and through obedience and through listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yes, our Lord walked this earth and he went through all types of hell. So he can overcome hell through the blood that he shed so that you and I can realize that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is relatable. He is very relatable. And he also wants us to relate in him, also relate with him by following the example of how he walked in love, how he was bold, how he did not care who was who. He was about his father's business. He was fearless and he did not make distinction. He did not discriminate against people. Let us follow the steps of our Lord and Savior. And before he was sent up into heaven, he said, I sent, before he ascended, he told us about the Holy Spirit, who is going to guide us and lead us into all truth. You can't do this walk without the Holy Spirit. Just because you're not speaking in tongues does not mean the Holy Spirit is not still a teacher, a comforter, and a guide. He will be. And at the appointed time, if it's so, the will of God, you will be filled but you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit through the, uh, through the manifestation of speaking in an unknown tongue if you don't listen to him anyway in the day-to-day -day instructions he may give to you. All right, guys, I hope this message encourages you and God bless.